What's up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. 2022 Panini Prism Football just sold out. This is a six-box hobby half case break. Page change number one. All card ship, guys. Highly anticipated release finally releasing with the 2022 draft class, which I think is still pretty solid, guys. All right, Ramming got the Panthers via a filler. Last spot mojo. Do they really, Frank? Yeah, that's something that I would leverage. I don't think I ever even knew that. I think everybody only really talks about is like Florida and Texas. Alright guys, so, six boxes on the left, six boxes on the right. Let's see which one we're going to use here for this side. Roll a one, two, three, goes for the left side, four, five, six for the right side. Here we go, roll. That's a four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to use this one here for number two. <laughs> Damn, James Savage. About, about Mexico, guys. Team Mexico right now up 3-1 over Canada, which is a crucial game. Canada, USA, and Mexico are all 2-1. So I think the winner of this game for sure advances. And then it's all up to seeing if maybe USA were to lose to Colombia. And then I think it would go by, like, tiebreaker. Does it go head-to-head -head first and then tiebreaker with, like, runs? Or is it always just going to be runs? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm just a homer for California, but I, I'd probably, I'd probably live in New York too, probably, right? I think I'd choose like LA. I'd choose the Bay Area up north. You know, I'd probably choose like you said, Miami, one of those cities in, in Florida. Definitely New York, Chicago. That is the question, Tristan. We were talking about that earlier. We feel like. I, I personally feel like Eckler makes sense in Chicago. You know, obviously, Montgomery not there no more. He can get a nice big paycheck there. Good weapon to Justin Fields. They got the money. Well, it depends, James. I think just like everywhere in a big city, I'm sure certain areas are cheaper than others in the suburbs around L.A. So... You know, um, let's say here in Hermosa Beach, super expensive. I mean, you can find like a one bedroom, one bath for like maybe seventeen, eighteen hundred, but it's probably really small, like four hundred square feet or less. Honestly, I used to live in Gardena. I was paying, I think, like I think nineteen hundred for a one bedroom, one bath apartment, which is really nice, though. I mean, compared to what was out there, you could probably get a, a, a decent apartment for probably fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. Um, but it's probably closer to 2000 honestly. Just very expensive if you really think about it. But obviously, it just depends on how you like to live. If, if you, uh, nice Mariota. David Bell, nice RPA to start us off already. Depends on how, how nice you like it or not. You know, uh, the nicer, the, the more expensive it is. I moved to Long Beach, downtown Long Beach, like a year and a half ago. And I love, I love it where we live. Paying a little bit more, but I, you get more amenities and stuff like that, you know. Whoa. Card's a little bent there. Hopefully that flattens in a top loader. That's a little Prism Drake London. That looks... I don't know. I don't know if that's going to flatten. Is that one of those Prism throwbacks? 
Looks like it. Kyler Murray? That one pack was really, really bent. Or warped, I should say. Top load that now to kind of start try to start flattening that. I don't think all the packs are like that. I just think it was specifically this one. Really, really warped. Not a good sign for the first box. Hopefully they're not all like that. This pack, wow, what the hell, dude? Dude, this card is literally stuck. It's stuck. Look at this. So sad, dude. Jameson Williams. Sorry about that, uh, Frank. I mean, kind of had to pull it off apart. Well, I hope all the prisms are not like that, and it's just really this box. Maybe this box was just a little defected or something. Javon Holland, who's a stud as well, to 175. I don't think they're all like this, guys. I think literally something happened with these packs here, and it just got really messed up. I do believe. I don't think. I don't think they're all like that because it was just that one stack. Now it's kind of going back to normal. Yeah, but this is a little bit worse than the Ben Baller, honestly. Out of 49, of course, Adam Vinatieri's fine. There you go, there's our second auto. That's for the Indianapolis Colts. Jay Kirby with that one. And Stephon Diggs. To 199. We have Devondre Campbell. Twenty-five. Brilliance. That's a cool little insert there. And a Jamal Williams. Where does Jamal Williams go, guys? I feel like he's he's kind of the odd man out now, right? Out of 249. Taekwon Thornton. <laughs> Actually using Panini presses, I didn't, I didn't read that till now. G look. Panini does sound good though. New recruits, Desmond Ritter, and a Rashad Bateman. Silver Patty Mahomes. Let's do that up for you, Gabe. Trey Hendrickson. And look at that. Beautiful. Malik Willis. Little color match. Blue ice. 94 out of 99. It's pretty sweet. I thought Josh Jacobs got, uh, got a franchise tag, James. And he didn't have an exclusive, so I don't think he has a choice. I think he has to either sign it or hold out for a contract with the Raiders. Yeah, I'm interested to see where Miles Sanders goes now. I mean, who knows? I don't know. Could this happen? Maybe Miles thinks he's worth a lot more, and then his agent and them try to find a suitor, and nobody wants to pay them, and then maybe he does come back for really less money, but I don't think so. I feel like someone's going to sign him. For a decent contract. I just kind of want to know where he's going. So that way I either I dump his cards now. Or I hold on to them during the season. For like early. Early preseason.
the whole Lamar Jackson thing is kind of weird, but I, I really think it's not that people don't think he's worthy of the contract. I just think that not only do you have to like pay the man what he is worth and what he wants, but to give up two first round picks and have to pay the guy, that's it's kind of tough right there. I think that's the only reason why I think some teams kind of backed off on Lamar Jackson really. All right, this box looks fine. So maybe it was just that weird box. Speaking of Lamar, there's a the fireworks there. Mari Cooper. 75. And I'm a little Garrett Wilson silver rookie autograph. Cup room with the Jets, Jets, Jets. It's funny that uh, Miles Sanders and Josh Jacobs obviously were the running backs in 2019 that actually had really good seasons their final year of their contract. Jamal Williams. Also, too, guys, I'm going to be chasing some McNabb autos and colors in here, so if anybody hits one of those, I'm a potential buyer, okay? Brees Hall. It's 199. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's... I don't know. It's a weird situation with Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. I feel like they might have got turned off. I feel like, obviously, he felt like he was worth more than that. Although, three years, 133 guaranteed? That's... I don't know. It sounds like a pretty good deal to me. But... I think... <laughs> the one thing, honestly, is that... The... The Browns contract with Deshaun Watson changed the game forever. It's very unrealistic for other 31 teams. I think the Browns just totally messed up. They really were desperate. Obviously, drafting quarterbacks hasn't been the best thing for them, so they decided to pay this guy everything. And, I mean, I, I don't blame Lamar Jackson thinking, man, if that guy's getting paid that much, have you not seen what I've done in my first X amount of years? But I, just have to, I just think he has to realize that that's kind of unrealistic. Not every team's gonna be that dumb. <coughs> Ramondre Stevenson. You got a snake skin. Stephon Diggs. Sorry, I had to quickly take that. But yeah, I don't think so either, Tristan. I hope for Brown's country, Brown's nation, he does do well for them. Because they, they spent a lot on that dude and they're kind of forced to pay that dude no matter what. But yeah, it's kind of hard for me to see them really thinking that he's going to take them to the promised land. So I don't know, we'll see. Cooper Cup. Yeah, I mean, look, when Kyler Murray signed that contract after that one year they had, going to the playoffs and the year he had, Clint Portis, that's pretty nice. Green scope. I think he was worth it. I really I really did believe in the guy. Obviously regressed. Had a major knee surgery, so it's going to be kind of tough to, the, to come back. But I think Kyler Murray is capable of, man. I just think he needs to kind of grow up, become that leader that I know he can be. But, you know, obviously now it's not looking too good. But, um, ooh, what is this? Oh, it's just a silver. Quinn Nelson. 
I mean, I think people need to realize that Tristan, not, there's not many Mahomes. How many Mahomes is there every generation? <laughs> you know? There's only so many you can find. And even Mahomes is kind of special in that sense. Jake Ferguson. To 225. But, you know, I will say... I will say... I, I think one quarterback that has a lot of potential... You guys can laugh at me, but... I think one quarterback that has a lot of potential to be a very big dual threat, big time, is Justin Fields, honestly. That dude has a cannon. And in college, he wasn't really known for running as much as he did. But now in the NFL, people know how good he can run. He just needs to kind of take that Jalen Hurts step, that leap, you know? Just get better accuracy. Um, and... Uh, you know, just really better decision making. Honestly, if he can, if he can get better at that, obviously get a better team surrounding him, which he is this year. That dude could be legit. And obviously, staying healthy is going to be one thing. Kind of limit those those blows. So, look, Jalen Hurts. I think got there because he obviously devoted all of himself to getting better. Look, Jalen Hurts will never have the arm that <laughs> all these other guys all these other guys have. Jalen Hurts' arm is not strong at all. <laughs> but he doesn't need to have a strong arm, right? I mean, as long as he's making better decisions like he did last year, you know, tucking it, running it, trying to obviously be smart with the football. I mean, as long as he gets time in the pocket, he can make every throw. So you're not going to see Jalen Hurts completing a 60-yard, 70-yard bomb all on himself, you know? You're probably going to see him throwing a 40, 50 yard bomb and then the receiver doing the rest. Fedarian Mathis. Joe Mixon. Devin McCourty. Jackson Hill. Yeah, I think an O-line is, is clutch, man. Like I said, I think now that you're moving towards running back, you don't got to pay them much. You know, you can find running backs in later rounds and just pay some of these free agent guys on one-year, two-year deals to kind of get the job done. That saves a lot of money on offensive side, right? I think you do have to pay for a big-time wide receiver, maybe two, to obviously kind of help out your, your quarterback a little bit, but... I think that extra money that you were having to pay for the lineman or for the running back is now what you really want to beef up and pay that extra second tackle or guard, you know, to a good contract. Because, yeah, I think it's kind of proven if you're the quarterback gets more time in the pocket to throw the ball, Christian McCaffrey, I think more successful, right? I mean, David Carr looked like the shit going into going out of college to the NFL, but guess what? That. Houston, Texas team did not do anything to help him out. And he was sacked like a gazillion times. And never really recovered from that. But nowadays, obviously, I think the NFL loves those dual threat quarterbacks that obviously can run the ball and get out of the pocket, which obviously helps your case out. You can't have a Peyton Manning or Tom Brady back there anymore in this league. 
think that era is kind of done with. You need to have a little bit of mobility. You know, maybe like a Rodgers or Justin Herbert, those guys that can kind of still run and move the ball around. Mahomes. But if you have a guy like Hurts or Fields that can really get out of the pocket and run around, obviously it benefits you a lot. Marquise Colston. Sensational signature. And we have a little camo, Josh Allen, to 25. 11 out of 25. Whoa, the hype looks cool. That's a purple power. Number to 49. And Jordan Davis. It's a 60. Garrett Wilson, Mark Andrews. We also do have a top little list for a handful of players. So if I skip like a big time player, don't worry. I'm sure it's gonna get sleeved at least or top loaded. I think our sleeve and top load list is. Let me check. I've learned quite a few players. Malik, Purdy, Kenny Pickett, Sam Howell, Wilson, Hutchinson, Chris Olave. That dude has to only be making like six, eight, six to eight hundred thousand dollars, right? I mean, if Kenny Gainwell is drafted in the third round, he's making a million dollars. I'd have to assume that a seventh round dude is probably making less. But I'd assume Kansas City is probably fairly cheap to live in, cost of living. Is it? Is it? Is it fairly cheap? So I'd assume he'd be fine, right? I think we kind of forget that, like, in most of the world, most of the United States, like, if you're not in L.A., New York, you know, some of the bigger cities, like, your rent or mortgage is probably, like, a thousand bucks or less. <laughs> so if you're making five, six hundred thousand dollars, you're doing pretty well. Tory Holt, 1099. Saquon Barkley. We got Tyler Higby. To 225. Emergent. Nice little Trayvon Walker. Tristan, there you go, man. Out of 99. There you have it, Logan Hall. For the Bucks. Chris Godwin. To 225. The Danian Tomlinson. 60. Hutchinson.
Ooh, nice McNabb right there. That's a cool color. Matt Smith, 19 out of 25. And Trayvon Diggs. Nice little vet auto there for the Cowboys. Add with that one. Rashawn Gary. To 149. Can you pick it? Terrence Marshall Jr. Troy Anderson. And Devondre Campbell. All right, next box.
Jonathan Greenard to seventy five. Travis Etienne to two uh, one forty nine. You got David Montgomery to 125. Zaire Alexander to 249. A nice KV on Thibodeau. I, I will say though, the centering in this prison this year looks pretty nice actually. To 125. Not to say every single card is centered, but. It's pretty good. Derrick Henry, Purple Ice. To 225. Denzel Ward. To 99. Kenny Pickett. Tua, Togo by Loa, to 199. Tyler Boyd, to 175. I feel like, have we got an autograph yet here? Come on, where are the autographs at? Here's one. Dante Culpepper to 149, sensational signatures. Little Harvey. Whoa. Prism break. That looks awesome. Little Drake London to 99. And a Carson Strong for the Eagles. Do we only get one auto here on this side? Dante Culpepper was the only auto, right? Wow, we got duped. Only one. Hopefully there's an extra one lying in here. Dude, I don't know, dude. I don't even think I've seen Pacheco. I've only seen Sky Moore. All right, here we go. Last box. There's Chris Jones. Brilliance. Little Aaron Rodgers. And Damian Harris. There's a Purdy. Whoa, we got a stained glass. There we go. Garrett Wilson. How about that, Adam Kupperman? You know, Adam, I, I tend to hit you some pretty good Jets hits, I will say. <laughs> and a little Drake London. 
Great pack right there. Little Mac Daddy Jones. And a rookie flashback, Desmond Ritter. With a cave on Thibodeau. 125. There's Brian Cook. You might actually have a Pacheco on here, Gilo. I might have just might have passed it up. I feel like in that six box, there's got to be at least one rookie of of most teams. There's Aiden. George Kittle. Mahomes fireworks. There's DJ Moore. A lot of color here for the Panthers, which was part of the the filler team rando. And Desmond Ritter. Nice rookie autograph. Kenny Pickett, Aaron Donald. And a boy. For the Falcons. Jack Lambert. And I have a little smoking on the Joe Burrow. Brilliance. I don't think I'll ever say his name ever again differently. And a little boy there. Boom. And there you go, guys. That was it. So, that was the break. Like I said, I might have passed up some base rookies, but don't worry. The top load list that we have, we will even top load it. Um, autograph wise though nice Desmond Ritter we did get a stained glass Dante Culpepper Trayvon Diggs Torrey Holt Marquise Colston Clint Portis Garrett Wilson Malik Willis there obviously we have a ton ton of color a whole stack right there Adam and Terry Jameson Williams David Belt Patch Auto and of course like I said lots and lots of colors in here for a lot of these teams. So appreciate it guys. This is number one. Number two is coming up next. Jaspiescasebreaks.com.